let me start comments first about his way of delivering a lecture, because I think that there is something interesting also in the way he does. Um, you notice that um, um, the way he delivers his lecture tells a lot about his approach to history, I think, Jacques, the culture and milieu he belongs to, which is quite essential to understand his way of thinking, and more general, about his aims. Huh? So, I mean, I'm always someone who likes to, the obser to observe. So I observed the way, having been a teacher, a professor for I don't know how many decades, to uh, try to observe his way of doing it. Um, it is, in a way, in my opinion, very personal. It's very much Jacques Lucan, as I know Jacques Lucan. But I have to say it's also very European. Jacques enters directly into the theme of his talk. Hmm? From the very beginning, he is in media res. Hmm? There is no transition between the slide of the title and the topic. He's not looking for any mediation. He don't even use the art of rhetoric. He don't even read the title of his lecture. I mean, right there, the first image. Plus, and this is something that I think it's even more uh, interesting, but it's also a big, big difference between the Anglo-Saxon world, that it's not only a performing, performative attitude, but it's a way of thinking. He doesn't offer any key to understand how his argument will develop and how the same will be taken to the end. Hmm? He doesn't start saying this lecture takes into account this and that and that, and this is how I'm going to. Plus, there is always an open end. You realize there's always an open end. It's not that he doesn't reach the end. But he leaves an open end. OK, let's see his lecture on organic and texture, texturic. Uh, Jacques made it very explicit. I don't know if you remember. He said at the very beginning, I offer you Frank Lloyd Wright. Here's the picture definition of organic. And yesterday, from the moment he started, we found him, uh, ourselves immersed into the Piranhas. Campo Marzio, a bit like a, such a, a kind of conversation, kind of conversation that we had stopped 10 minutes before, and we are back to our conversation. He is operating <coughs> in a continuous narrative. The four lecture, actually, they have, uh, and he, he said at the very, 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 very beginning, <coughs> probably his very first sentence, but that we have to see this as a kind of series. But still, I mean, it's something that sometimes we are not used. In a way, Jacques, this can uh, cause uh, a certain degree of ambiguity. Also, a certain uh, it, this comes hand in hand with a certain surprise. And what I think it's uh, the result of all this is the quality of this conversation in the morning. Because actually, not giving you all, from the very beginning, all the different steps, I mean, we are forced to go through the end and then to think about the next morning. Basically, I don't want to say that the morning conversation is more interesting than the lecture, but it's the, I mean, they go together. I mean, they form a unity, which is quite uh, exceptional. Um, in fact, uh, the, it was only during the Q&A period yesterday that Piranesi's Campo Marzio, um, it was clear to me that Piranesi's Campo Marzio stands next to the Greek Agora, the uh, uh, Roman Forum, the Imperial Fora, I mean, the Nolly plan, I think it's a bit of a sidetrack, but it's there. So here they are. Hmm? And all, all, all of them, he calls them models, 
Then he says metaphors. In a way, they are almost a meta project for the contemporary scene. But we have to see the series. And this was, I mean, only if you if you take the lecture from the beginning to the end and you start thinking the way. And again, the same exercise, Jacques went through all these models, Agora, um, par, uh, the Agora, Greek, and Roman, mapping them and revealing his intention, Jacques' intention, to the way the architects and the historians appropriate. He stopped at the very last, on the verge, I mean, he never said how he is appropriating, but he tells us in this exercise how the Gideon, Le Corbusier, Colin Roth, they are appropriating one, two, three, four, one of them, all of them. I have to give Jacques a great credit. I think it's a very interesting strategy as a teacher to engage, specifically to engage in this double side exercise, the lecture and the conversation. So, I mean, this is something special that I wish to underline because this is not what we are used to have. And I think it's, uh, I mean, good that the CCA is also engaging in this way of lecturing and responding. Now, Piranesi Campo Marzio. Um, a model that I would describe almost as a sine qua non for the, sine qua non for the architects after the ancien regime, at the verge of the Enlightenment. I mean, this is what it is. Could be, I mean, without, I would say, exaggerating, you would not understand the transition. I mean, it's an extremely sophisticated um, in instrument. It's a tool to understand how architecture moved from the ancien regime to the Enlightenment and then a modern time. Uh, I think it's very relevant, Jacques, that you mentioned Francesco Piranesi. Francesco is Giovan Battista's son. By the way, there is also a daughter, and she's not less skilled. So the Piranesi is uh, I mean, as a family, extremely interesting. Well, Francesco goes to Paris. He opens a workshop, una bottega di incisione in Paris. Question, for instance, what would be Ledoux and Ledoux treatise, l'architecture, without Piranesi's Campo Marzio? Good question. Ledoux never traveled to Italy. Ledoux never took a grand tour, but if you look at this L'Architecture, the treatise that he published 1802 or 3, I think, uh, after he was uh, in prison. In fact, uh, I was even debating I mean, with myself, within myself, if Aldo Rossi's interest in L'Architectura della Città for the four and so on is not the consequence, if not the result, of his early study of Boulet, the French environment. I mean, this going to Roman Forum of uh, La Campo Marcia as a second result of a, an early interest. But Piranesi's Campo Marcio also traveled. And how did this famous map travel? I mean, yesterday night, I was reading, I couldn't sleep, I have to admit. I was reading this issue of IFI. I just got it. Uh, many thanks, Alexandra. It was a great uh, uh, present for I received. Uh, actually, it's one of the most interesting, intellectually speaking, engaging uh, magazine in last uh, camp, the last years. I always read IFI. I almost wait. I mean, I'm there waiting when it's coming out because it's very intriguing. And my eyes, believe it or not, were attracted by a column here. And it says, and to import Campo Marzio by Russo. I said, what's this? I mean, Campo Marzio, again? I mean, <laughs> the CCA is dealing with a very hot topic. We are right at the center of the discussion. And what's this? This is a, a very, I mean, you should read. It's a very witty piece. 
written by Peter Wilson, and the uh, Bollis and Wilson um, London-based I mean, office. And Peter Wilson talks about the Italian Grand Tour, the reasons for the Italian Grand Tour, a great topic. Huh? And while uh, writing, here he comes with someone I wish to mention, Robert Adam. Roberto Adam, architetto cele celeberrimo. Mm? Uh, Roberto Adam, actually Roberto Adam is the one uh, to whom Piranesi is dedicating both Le Antichità Romane and the Campo Marzio that we are discussing. When it was finally published, uh, 62, uh, James, who is Robert, uh, Robert, Roberto Adam, Robert's brother, what he did, he dispatched to London apparently something like 60 kilos of plates of the Campo Marzio to give it to his brother for pro promotional, believe it or not, sale in England. So this is like something you need to have, I mean. Um, my, the question, and my question is, where Adams, or the Adams, free figuring that transporting the Campo Marzio plates to London was the beginning of a corrosive virus uh, who would destroy the metropolis, the contemporary city. Don't forget that Sohn has also a complete collection of, uh, of the Campo Marzio. And in this, I, mean, I stop there here, but in his um, uh, writing, uh, Peter Wilson, in, at a certain moment, of course, he goes back to Manfredo Tafuri, uh, the sphere and the labyrintho. And there is one thing that I wish to, I mean, leave you also, because I see that this will be the topic of your presentation. Manfredo Tafuri always insists, and I, know what, I don't know what Jacques thinks, that the Campo Marzio is both a project, it's a project, it's a reinvention. What you see there didn't exist. Piranesi and Roberto Ada walking to the Campo Marzio. Campo Marzio is not the Roman form. Campo Marzio is not the imperial form. It's a different area. There were traces, but this is basically an incredible invention of architecture. It's a project. It's not only an archaeological excavation. It's an invention of a city. And I think this is what makes the Campo Marzio such a, an extremely um, uh, a relevant uh, document to trace I mean, the, the, what comes before and after the Campo Marzio. And uh, Tafuri speaks, uh, you mentioned me, uh, writes, uh, the triumph of the fragment of formless tangles of spurious organisms, a magnetic field jammed with objects, a typological negation, a semantic void. But what makes, I mean, even more interesting that at a certain moment, I mean, this becomes uh, I mean, according to uh, Manfredo, also a way, I mean, um, to not to be any longer able to engage with history. It's a labyrinth of history. And the architect then have to reinvent the, the city in this, in this case. So, I mean, this was a very interesting discovery of late yesterday night. I wish you read, I mean, Peter Wilson, that it's quite um, an entertaining, uh, anyhow. And now, I mean, uh, considering Jacques' reading of the Campo Marcio, at this point it's clear that it's the watershed between before and after. Uh, how are we dealing now with the presentation? Who is uh, chairing? Who is starting? I will start. Jasmine, and then you move. Yes. OK, go ahead. We are prepared to know much better and more about the Campo Marzio. Um, maybe we need uh, another day to prepare for your... <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Come on, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, so, I'll start.
start by um, proposing. I will start by proposing to focus on Campo Marzio and uh, since we spoke so much yesterday about Ram Kulhas and since he is now um, curating the uh, Biennale, the Venice Biennale, I thought of maybe um, doing something, doing a small exercise uh, like the one of the Biennale, going back to the fundamentals but rather than going back to the architectural fundamentals, going back to a more urban scale fundamentals. Uh, focusing on the Campo Marzio as our um, background layer. And so I will go through that and I will uh, go through a process of zooming in and uh, proposing fundamental elements of urban scale through the Campo Marzio. It's a exercise, so feel free to jump in. Um, so this comes from an interest in um, the small text that we got uh, um, as, as an explanation of what the lectures will be. And uh, our discussion started before, uh, before having the lecture. And we started discussing among ourselves what could be interesting, what did we retrieve from the lectures. And it seemed to us that the notion of fragments um, was very interesting to us. And we thought of uh, the idea of fragments, how it's, relates, uh, how it's related to Campo Marzio, but also how it's related to uh, Tafuri, to Benham, to all the, to all the uh, uh, suggestions of projects and plans that were between dystopia, between uh, heterotopia, and between utopia, and how these projects are not reality, but do refer to reality somehow, and how the notion of fragments is, keeps on recurring in all of these. Um, so the first element um, that I would like to talk about is the notion of fragments. Um, the, the notion, this notion uh, came out of um, um, an interest between, uh, for me, an interest between Le Corbusier versus Piranesi. And while, while yesterday Le Corbusier um, seemed to hate Piranesi and this, uh, for me, is linked to um, the element of fragments more than anything. And it's not fragment, but rather fragments as a whole. And um, there the seems that Corbusier uh, is referring more to an ordered collection of the fragments. And um, Piranesi, uh, according to Corbusier, is just putting uh, an assemblage of disordered fragments together. And it seems that uh, all the discussion yesterday went in this direction of is it ordered, is it disordered, is it controlled, is it a laissez-faire attitude? And the whole discussion, uh, and this is why um, we kept going uh, back and for, uh, for back, uh, backward and forward between uh, what is ordered, what is disordered. And so that's on the notion of fragments. Um, in relation to that is an idea of defragment also, again, back to Corbusier and Piranesi, there, there, there seemed to be also a, a different understanding of what the fragment is. An interest in monumentality and an interest in hierarchy seems to differ between the two. And uh, whereas Piranesi, the elements are uh, not monumental as is, but uh, they, they gain their, their hierarchy uh, as, as being one of many. Uh, and rather, Corbusier's uh, lay uh, of plants, it's the triumph of elements under the same light, but the elements are monumental. So there's <coughs> this interplay between um, monumentality of the fragment and the, the hierarchy of where the fragment is within within a certain system. So that's the second layer I would like to introduce. The third layer is the limit itself, and this we did not touch upon yesterday so much, but I believe that um, the idea of limit comes very much in, in relation to um, a, a more a, a period that came perhaps after Piranesi, where the where the limit is is more more important than than the fragments, and then the collage and the the montage and the assemblage uh, become three different approaches to. Um, to gathering the fragments because the, the, um, the limit is carefully or not put uh, in order to de define uh, where, the, 
how, how the different fragments uh, are linked together. And um, here we see that um, the limit is um, in Piranesi, for example, you see here that there's the river, there's the piece of the fragment, it's a clear cut. Um, on the other side, there's not such a clear cut, but it's, it's, so, it's a sort of gritty uh, pattern. And the whole thing is kind of matched together. Um, there does not seem to be a certain coherence in, in, in this collage, but if you link it to um, if you link it to the whole idea of um, the triumph of fragments, and, and there seems to be a triumph of fragments, whereas the fragments become more important than their borders, and the collection becomes more important. Um, and zooming in more is the notion of interstitial versus liminal. Um, I make a distinction between interstitial and liminal, whereas interstitial is more a focus on the space in between and the space itself and how it functions. And liminal is more on the liminae, which, uh, which is the border, and how the, how the space is more uh, a focus on the border rather than the space itself. Um, this takes us back to many, uh, many uh, current uh, projects, but also many uh, projects of uh, Rem Koolhaas, of Peter Eisenman, where interstitiality, where nothingness, where void becomes interesting. We also touched upon it yesterday. And um, the whole idea of uh, what is the void, what's the value of the void, and how the void could be either um, a space separating or a space connecting. And then uh, if, we, if we think of, of all the examples we got yesterday from that point of view, we realize that there are, there's, there's some uh, projects that focus on this void as being the most important things. For example, uh, Ram Koolhaas imagining nothingness, he, he clearly sets the, the focus on, on these spaces rather than focusing on the fragments and the element and the, the notion of collage. And, and um, so there seems to be another perspective from another element. So and it goes in this direction. Um, finally, a, zoom, a bit of a zoom out from the interstitial is when we look at uh, all of these interstitial spaces together, we realize that one of the major um, critical points of yesterday's discussion was that many of the, um, of the projects uh, and uh, utopias presented yesterday um, were very much um, going either in one direction or another, going into orderly or going into disorderly. And, and having, uh, we have seen a lot of the uh, figure ground uh, divisions where there's either a focus on the, on the ground <coughs> or a focus on the figure. And uh, sometimes the, the ground was the void and sometimes the ground was the figure. And, and so the, this interplay of black and white seems to be, um, and that's my kind of conclusive point of, of yesterday's uh, presentation, is that we spoke so much of dichotomies um, and putting this, uh, these dichotomies into black and white um, divisions. And um, I think we should, just stop talking about dichotomies. I think there's, there's really um, a very wrong, I would say, um, approach to, to, the, to, to the problem. And um, since we are discussing these, this one versus that one, this one versus that one, and how Piranesi is against, um, and how Tafuri is interested in Piranesi, how Le Corbusier is not, how there, there seems to be um, a very a great focus on dichotomies and um, the gray scale uh, that should that is always apparent uh, in in the way we deal with voids and interstitiality and borders and so on um, provides a much healthier uh, way of approaching uh, yesterday's problem. And the f if if we shift the focus towards um, the gray scale and going back to the idea of um, I think um, the idea of the man and the crowd and how there's triumph in the crowd rather than the man. Um, we, if we think about it from a grayscale point of view, um, the the whole idea of of what is the assemblage and what uh, where is the crowd in this assemblage, gives a different uh, notion on all of the elements that we have 
uh, seen so far. And therefore, interdependency that we have spoken on on, on many yeah. levels in yesterday and the day before, the, the notion of in interdependency um, uh, becomes uh, much more intricate because it touches upon the, the layer of the formal, the layer of the assemblage, but the, the, the layer of what we see, what we perceive, what we experience, the phenomenology, but uh, at the same time the program, the, the, the interdependency of the various elements that I presented today, the interdependency on the gray scale uh, is the most interesting because it, it, it puts away the dichotomies and focuses on this idea of, of having um, a more interesting notion of heterotopia because we moved yesterday a lot between utopias, dystopias and heterotopias and maybe the most interesting in, in this in this scale maybe is heterotopias from a gray scale point of view. So heterotopias being an alternative of the reality yet presenting uh, a non-ideal way of dealing with the reality and having all the, all the layers within that. Um, yes. Do we want to stop uh, or do we want to two and two? Well, how do we want to do? There is a connection. Okay, so go ahead. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. So let's do the connection. Huh? Okay, okay, go ahead. We move the platform. many points of uh, what I will present today uh, converge with uh, your position, especially ah. regarding uh, that a full text <laughs> that Jack uh, presented yesterday. And I was in general trying to take advantage of this, um, um, let's say, discussion of fragments, both in regards uh, uh, both regarding in, uh, let's say, construction of uh, historical, of a constellation of historical narrative, but also the material ones that construct the, spa the space of the city. So uh, I will have a couple of uh, fragments of thought, of interpretation of uh, the project, uh, Campo Marzio, and let's say some responses to uh, yesterday's lecture. And I would like to first begin by reiterating uh, some ideas that has been put forward uh, regarding this zooming in, zooming out, the multiple scales that uh, Campo Marzio actually functions, the many ways we can approach, we can read, we can analyze it. And what immediately came to my mind regarding this operation of zooming in was um, Richard Hamilton's um, uh, People Multiple, a work of uh, 1968 which uh, he begins in the top, uh, with a top image of uh, UK Bay, where it's, uh, let's say, uh, it's a place of leisure for a specific class, and if I'm not mistaken, it's the Whiteley Bay, so we are, which is very close to Newcastle, so we are talking about working class. But uh, I think, uh, we have to keep in mind, of course, that Hamilton uh, op uh, experiments with a completely different medium. So it's not exactly the same, but I'm only talking about and discussing the operation of uh, zooming in. And uh, we see here uh, uh, this place where each figure becomes the part of the crowd. Actually, the figure merges uh, with the <coughs> ground, as because you were mentioning again a figure in ground. And uh, it, it's, let's say, this place that it's occupied by this amorphous uh, lump of uh, generic people. And I think that Hamilton then is trying to proceed uh, with uh, this uh, process, uh, with succession of uh, zooming in, to and try, we might say, that uh, he attempts to maybe approach this individual, make it uh, more clear, liberate it from uh, this uh, merging with the crowd. But uh, of course, here the enlargement actually doesn't work that way, but it rather, uh, instead of enhanced, and yeah, 
and Keynesian, sorry, it actually undermines all of these uh, initial uh, intention. Uh, so uh, to use uh, Hal Foster's words uh, when describes this uh, work, the technical limits of photography might prompt us to consider the ideological limits of uh, representation. And I think it is uh, within this uh, threshold of uh, between uh, information and noise, between uh, representation and abstraction, that uh, the previous work seems similar, uh, in my opinion, with uh, the Campo, uh, the Campo Marzio. And uh, not only, of course, within the history of uh, uh, contemporary city, but also the ways we represent uh, the space of the city. And uh, uh, to use the foolish words, that uh, the triumph of the fragment completes and actually consummates this dissolution of uh, form of this time on an urban scale. And again, quoting Tafuri, uh, this triumph results ultimately to a kind of typological negation and an architectural banquet of nausea, a semantic void created by an excess of virtual noise. And I think this uh, limitless uh, proliferation of uh, fragments and here again, Tafuri uh, suggests that uh, it is probably something like, uh, under, uh, let's say, an operation against this emerging society of uh, the Enlightenment and the space it claims uh, for the city. This uh, it undermines it the, its own <coughs> possibilities. So it works as this sophisticated instrument, as uh, you you said. The drawing is not a tool to perceive and decipher uh, the fragments, uh, the separate fragments of the city. But instead, it becomes an image that obstructs and maybe paralyzes the viewer who is trying to, uh, to interpret the, the drawing. And again, to quote uh, Tafur in this uh, very impressive uh, uh, phrase he's using, reason here is shown to be an instrument capable of anticipating the monsters of the irrational. So it is, this, uh, it is a project. I mean, uh, Campo Marzio, it is a Piranesi project, but it's at the same time, it's uh, the denunciation of uh, the project as well. And uh, so that was uh, my first observation. And then the second one would be on a completely uh, different note, that uh, there exists another element that apart uh, from uh, the fragments themselves, the pieces that come together when we discuss about uh, the process of bricolage, assemblage, uh, ensemble, or any kind of, uh, collect of collection of uh, pieces. And I think this is uh, the laws, the rules, or the um, broader uh, overarching relations that bring the pieces together and uh, that combine them under conceptual associations. And uh, eventually it is, um, I would say that, uh, let's say we actually evaluate uh, this process under, in relation to these rules. And of course, uh, these uh, relations may not necessarily obey any rational uh, rule, but they can be esoteric, metaphysical, and uh, only let's say, uh, obey, yield to the soul of the architect, uh, of the artist or the historian, or even the historian. Uh, and so I think that uh, it's such a thing that uh, instead of insisting only on the formal language of uh, the models, uh, of cities, of history, of events, we should maybe take a closer look on these, uh, let's say, overarching relations that bring uh, all the pieces together. and. Uh, because does Piranesi's uh, Campo Marzio is exactly the same, and should they be considered as exactly the same with uh, Rossi's uh, Città Analoga? I think uh, they don't, although they are using a very similar language. I think they are uh, they emerge from completely different contexts, co completely different subjects, and uh, their function is uh, very specific, uh, not necessarily opposite. They don't necessarily work uh, as opposites, but I think uh, they each one has a distinct character. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop with these two points for now, and then I can we'll return in the end with uh, uh, I come back to, to link my reflection uh, about, uh, no, 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 no. about uh, uh, the idea on uh, how we could uh, keep together fragments or just uh, detach them. So uh, I would like to analyze uh, two ways 
uh, two scenario we could say uh, in uh, which we could uh, study uh, different approaches on uh, treat uh, uh, fragments in the urban discourse then uh, we should uh, contextualize uh, uh, the idea of fragments uh, in the urban history we should say because uh, there's a kind of uh, an alternative uh, appearance of fragment in the history of the city for example if i think to the uh, modern city or uh, the simply concept of the zoning uh, is a bit uh, uh, is the idea of deny the idea of fragment the zoning is uh, maybe the process for uh, keep the, um, all the homogeneous uh, uh, fragments together but uh, this was just to explain uh, how the concept of a uh, fragment is circular uh, in the history of the city. So, um, first manner, uh, a manner to address the fragment is for me the famous uh, project of the non plan, or uh, rather, fragment in freedom, I would, uh, how Cedric Price uh, called uh, this. Um, this attempt. Uh, so in 19, you know everyone uh, this project for sure, but just uh, some notes. In uh, 1969, uh, Price, Ray uh, Rainer Banham, Peter Ola, and Paul ba Barker uh, published uh, an article in a magazine, uh, New Society, titled uh, Non Plan An Experiment in Freedom. This essay attempts to destroy the system of values linked to the to planning intended uh, as a process which in the best case uh, produce a secondary effect uh, non previewed in the most uh, of the cases more interesting than the effect uh, foreseen fro from the plan so uh, the non plan spirit uh, is to acquire knowledge instead to impose rules the the authors uh, try to evaluate the effect uh, of the non plan approach uh, on for territory and this is the reason because I call uh, this attempt a uh, scenario because uh, try to evaluate ev eventual uh, um, effects. So, uh, quoting um, the introducing of this article, uh, quoting uh, Cedric Price, uh, uh, he said, non plan in reducing the permanence of the assumed worth of past uses of space uh, through avoiding their very uh, reinforcement uh, might well give society not only an opportunity to re reassess uh, such worth, uh, but to establish a new order to priority to land, see and our use, uh, air use, uh, which would be related more directly to the valid social and economical lifespan uh, of such uses. And then uh, uh, through the motto used uh, for this uh, project with, uh, with uh, is uh, motto town must uh, make way for no town utopia for non plan i think uh, it's um, very relevant for the um, reflection on uh, fragments and uh, um, the main recommendation of this uh, article is that all the physical planning restriction have to be lifted and i an uh, do another quotation of uh, the article in general development, uh, plans would become more fragmentary and the present clearly defined pressures would start making themselves felt again in a fragmentary form physically. So I think uh, um, it's important to underline also the dark side of uh, this uh, attempt of uh, no plan. In uh, the book No Plan, Essay on Freedom, Participation and Change in Modern Architecture, and the urbanism. Uh, Benjamin Fricks uh, uh, argued that the idea of non plan were problematically uh, similar to those raised by the new right in the UK. The neoliberal free enterprise zone and their freedom for planning regulation were introduced in the UK in the 1980 by the Margaret Thatcher and we could uh, observe also the Canary Wharf uh, realization. This could be seen as a manu manipulation of the idea of Price, Banham, Hall and Becker. A second way I would like to analyze uh, a project as a scenario 
is uh, um, analyzing the, uh, the project we saw yesterday in about um, Roma Interrotta. And I would like to try to see to this project uh, as a contrafactual scenario in a certain way. I would like to introduce uh, you, maybe you know the book about uh, 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 um, edited by Robert Fogel in the 1964. This book is uh, relevant to thinking about the contrafactual scenario because uh, in this uh, economic uh, essay about the role of railroads uh, in the American <coughs> economic growth, Fogel tries uh, to build a scenario uh, considering the role of the railways. But what is a contrafactual scenario? It's an estimate of what would have occurred in a, the absence of the evaluated uh, intervention. So uh, if we think that uh, Roma Interrotta could be um, um, an attempt to uh, starting from uh, the, um, the Nolly plan, uh, um, um, uh, delating all the addiction uh, of the urban environment. And the, uh, about that, it's very important what uh, uh, Argan, uh, 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 Carlo Argan, wrote uh, about uh, this uh, introducing the exposition catalog. He said, Roma is interrupted because uh, there's come a time when it was no longer imagined and it, be, it began to be planned badly. So this is the uh, uh, starting point of the contrafactual scenario. And uh, it's very relevant what uh, also Colin Rowe wrote about uh, Roma Interrotta. The program for the exhibition was based upon the argument that after Nolli, the urban tissue of, Roman, of Rome had been inter interrupted. That is, that something assumed implicit in the urban tissue of Rome had become lost. In other words, since nothing very important in Rome had happened between 1748 and 1870, the ex exhibition won, uh, was uh, an ostensible critique of urbanistic uh, goings on since the overthrow of temporal power of the papacy. Many of the participants, I think, uh, failed to understand the message. So in the... Um, uh, I want to uh, go a bit deeper on the um, Stirling um, part, Trastevere area, and uh, um, try to... You had a great picture. Sorry? You had a great picture before. I think everybody was curious. Ah, yeah, no, I, this is the, in, <laughs> yeah, the opening of the exposition with the um, Portuguese at the center. No, just because I put this picture because I think it was a, a relevant moment for the cultural life in Rome, so it was strongly well, linked. And it's to next to Moran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, no, I just want to conclude uh, uh, with a uh, uh, kind of uh, the layering of this uh, contrafactual scenario. Try to understand uh, which element could be, uh, which uh, fragments could be considered uh, at the, as a <coughs> homogeneous uh, fragment. So, for example, the first layer uh, Stirling introduces the highway la la layer, the infrastructural. Uh, ecology, we can call it, and then uh, uh, the addiction of uh, the outwall uh, um, buildings. Then uh, he called this, um, the building you can see on the right side, uh, the fragment uh, uh, building. Uh, clearly he took uh, um, uh, projects uh, from uh, his own production as uh, a model to impose in the non-lease plan. And then uh, he proposed uh, uh, three typologies uh, of building, uh, which are the first one in the one uh, adding here, are the uh, shore uh, um, buildings, which could uh, mediate the relation with the, uh, the Tavere River. Then uh, the uphill uh, buildings, uh, which could uh, we should, uh, uh, which uh, should uh, mediate the relation with the happy uh, environment. 
and then uh, the mega structures uh, uh, proposed uh, for uh, revisit the concept of uh, the wall uh, should protect uh, the um, the city then uh, in uh, in uh, we pass by another um, topic. Uh, uh, no, always a reflection on fragments. Um, so, using the notion of fragment, I would like to discuss the dialectic process between plan and non plan using one of the different means of assemblage of fragments, um, the case of the urban archipelago, uh, which can be framed by Unger's project uh, Cities Within the City. So um, published in, for the first time in 1977, the publication uh, Die Stadt in der Stadt consisted of an urban design concept for the future development of Berlin as it was facing a crisis in its process of depopulation. The Cities Within the City project presents itself as a radical model of urbanism of negative growth a very contemporary matter when looking at the state of urgency found in shrinking cities, as for instance in the city of Detroit today. Um, I cite here Ungers. The idea of the city and the city is a basic concept for a future replanning of Berlin. It is sub substantiated in the image of Berlin as a city archipelago. The urban islands will have an identity in keeping with their history, social structure, and environmental characteristics. The city as a whole will be a federation of all these single towns with different structures developed in a deliberately antithetic manner. A decisive factor in the choice ought to be the degree of clarity and comprehensibility of the existing basic and design principles. Um, we would interpret here the islands constituting the archipelago as fragments of the city, which would all, um, on which insist Ungers, have their own identity specific to their historical continuity and uh, specific context. Um, I would like to focus on the notion of the green archipelago brought by Ungers, uh, which can be seen as the binding element between the heterogeneous entities um, so the sea between the islands. Um, in his thesis number seven for the proposals by the Summer Academy for Berlin, Ungers described uh, the green archipelago as follow. Um, the green interspaces form a system of modified nature and preserve a series of characteristics that range from suburban zones to parks and to wooded areas up to the urban developed zone or those of agricultural use. Um, with this in mind, I would like to ask, does the existence of void intrinsic to the concept of the archipelago becomes an opportunity for the unplanned inside an orchestrated whole? Um, can the cities inside the city be viewed as a model of middle ground between order disorder, creating an all-encompassing um, identity based on the inclusion of plurality? And uh, finally, looking more generally at the attitude of bricolage, can the mediation between plan and non-plan be found in the interstitial space between fragments of the city? And I think we can go to the final uh, image. And then, uh, I think I'd like to uh, finish with uh, like one bomb, like the ones Felipe threw on uh, Wednesday. And uh, of course, then we can check uh, exact speculation on uh, maybe some, uh, um, let's say, relationship between Campo Marzio and uh, the contemporary example, and we can check the limits of this speculation. And this is an image of um, uh, The Endless City publication, uh, which was edited by Ricky Bardet of uh, LSE, uh, published in 2011 after the Venice uh, of previous year. So here we do see somehow uh, two completely, two fragments uh, of the city. Uh, I mean, it's Sao Paulo and it's uh, on the left, it's uh, Favela of Paraisopolis. And uh, we see two, com two, uh, wor two worlds complete in themselves uh, uh, that uh, they meet under very obscured uh, arrangements uh, within the space of uh, the city. And uh, I think that 
this space of the city should actually articulate, let's say, this tension, this confrontation of uh, diver diverse elements. But uh, in this um, case, uh, this space of the city is actually limited on uh, one single line, on, uh, let's say, the very thin materiality of this uh, impenetrable wall. And uh, um, we do have uh, these two fragments that actually uh, in this case, they never collide. So, just the speculation of maybe seeing uh, this uh, incoherent uh, coming together of fragments uh, that we can see in the um, Campo Marzio. Okay. Yeah. Even, I mean, it goes better and better. And better. <laughs> Let's see the Campo Marzio. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, Jack, any comments? I, mean, I know you have many notes. Uh, and then yes, but, but, uh, but <laughs> I, I know you are learning a lot. Yes. I imagine. I, I, I am. Uh, I, I am happy because uh, <laughs> you have nothing to to do now. You you you, you have. Uh, no, you continue the. the the thinking about this uh, this plan and all the the, the problems of this plan and uh, I I am a very very uh, yes it's a, a, a good <laughs> a good work because uh, f for me uh, the lecture uh, of yesterday it's uh, it's not a, a success because I, <laughs> I made this lecture but because you you you, you continue to. As a reflection about this, and uh, uh, one or two remarks. Uh, you speak about fragment, and uh, yesterday I speak with Maristella after the lecture about uh, the, the plan of Ungers, Die Stadt in der Stadt, and uh, I have uh, I have decided to not to, not to show him it. Or because uh, I want to, to, to make a lecture not too long. So, but it's the same problem for, for, for me. Uh, not the same, but an, inter an interpretation of this problem, not in Berlin with the Glinik, with the, the Garden of Glinik, and all the problem of the obsessions of, of, of Ungers. So it's really interesting. So you, you can also uh, make a relation with Colas because Colas uh, wrote at the beginning of the text. It's uh, really a, at Cornell, it's a really a, a, a very interesting problem. But uh, after that, you, you speak about uh, the non-plan. Yes, <laughs> I agree because it's, uh, it's the same thinking. I, I had uh, uh, you, if you are interested in it, you can uh, also uh, uh, continue with uh, the plan of Milton Keynes yeah, because it's uh, really, really very interesting. You know, Milton Keynes, uh, and it is it, it is in the same uh, thinking you know, with the banana and all this. And uh, uh, this afternoon, I, I, I will speak about. Uh, the, the the author of uh, Milton Keynes, but in another side, uh, uh, Levin Davis, uh, which is a really a thinker about the urbanism. No? It's uh, really so perfect for me. No, perfect. All these uh, <laughs> these things. The, the question of fragment. The, the question of uh, figure ground. Also, but I, I want to perhaps make uh, one remark uh, about the, f like the question of fragment. It's, it's a question very, very interesting, but very also very difficult. Because uh, I, 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 is it a collage? No. Ah, what is a collage? Because a collage is a word like this. It's not. At, at what moment is it a concept? You know? 
Yes, you know or not? It, it, it becomes a concept, exactly, the collapse. The collapse is a painting in, nine, in 19... in 1912, when Braque and Picasso invent the papier collé, the papier collé. So it's at this moment, exactly, that uh, uh, the collage is really a, a, a position about, uh, uh, about the, the, the association of the different uh, Ob a different object or different papier, paper, no? uh, put on not on the canvas but on, on the odd paper in the first time and after on canvas. No? And the, the papier collé, it's we speak up after that we can speak about collage because but the, the 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 relation between all the pieces of the canvas uh, try to, to, to make an a balance and equilibrium. It's, uh, it's after that you can understand the free plan and all the all the, the interrogation, all the, the questions about uh, about the, the collage. Because the free plan, you, you, it's difficult to understand the free plan with uh, the free plan of the Corps Museum uh, without the, the, the question of the Braque and Picasso. So. Is it a collage? I think no. It's not a collage. It's uh, <coughs> oh no. Uh, it's not this type of collage. It's another type of collage. Uh, we we have to 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 make this effort. And what is this type of collage? Because it's absolutely full. It's not. Uh, it's not an equilibrium. You you can. It's impossible to, to, to see one, uh, one uh, balance between this uh, piece and this piece. No, it's uh, like, uh, like this. And I think it's uh, this character uh, which, made, which makes the, 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 the Campo Marcio really a model for contemporary city. No? Be because for the contemporary city, when Le Corbusier uh, is making, uh, was making his plan for saint dier for all the, the buildings, <coughs> it, it's, it's not like this, no? It's not, uh, it's like a plan with uh, equilibrium of all the, the pieces, all the buildings. Here, no? Here, it's, uh, it's uh, a chaotic, uh, Chaotic wall. It's like uh, uh, I don't know if uh, we speak about uh, Brownian move, uh, movement Brownian. I don't know if it's in, in, in English. Movement. The movement Brownian. All the um, cellules. Brownian. Ah, I don't know the English word. And how would you? Uh, Brownian movement. Brownian. Yeah. Brownian move. Uh, chaotic. Yeah. It's like this. The chaotic. Yes, it's like this. It's chaotic. It's uh, statistic. It's not. Uh, uh -huh. It's not. Uh, it's not. You, you, it's impossible to, to know exactly the relation between one thing and another thing. It's uh, uh, It's like the chaos is like this. No? And, and I think all these uh, these problems are, are in your uh, in, in your in your explanation. So uh, I, I I find it very very interesting. After that. Uh, I don't. I, I don't remember exactly what you what you uh, say about uh, non plan at the end, but uh, it seems that you 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 speak about uh, the the touch up period. No? Yeah. And, uh, no, this was just a comment uh, made uh, by this uh, yes. doctor, which shows uh, that uh, in the touch up period. Uh, the regulation of the holistic groups uh, could be seen as a reinterpretation of the <coughs> But it's just. Yes, it's yes, it's, it's. I think it, it's, uh, it's not. It's a, a reinterpretation, yes, but when, we, uh, when you, you, you read non plan, I think it's the same. Uh, 
thinking, thinking about the, the, the impossibility to, to, to make a, a regular plan, to make a, a regular development. Homogeneous, it's impossible. So the, the, the plan of the Milton Keynes, it, it's very interesting because uh, uh, Levin Davis put uh, a, a net, put a net on the territory, and after that, the development is uh, yes, open. It's, and and uh, yes. and it's not a g really agreed. Uh, it's agreed, but it's agreed uh, deformed by the by the landscape. So it's uh, for me. It's uh, it's also in relation to Campo Marzio. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Because you were speaking about, uh, so you were speaking about uh, assemblage, and uh, I have a colleague who's working actually on the difference between um, assemblage, collage, and montage. And just I would like to complicate your question by adding these differences because she works with uh, she works on the level between art and architecture. And uh, she mentions that assemblage is about assembling, montage is about mounting on, and then uh, collage is about actually gluing. And um, there might be a difference, and maybe the question is, is that an assemblage, or is it a collage, or is it a montage, or any of the three? And mm, I'm not answering that, I'm just saying maybe the idea of intently designed is uh, can help in the direction of answering that that when things are intently made there is a sort we can start speaking about a concept of of matter so we can start maybe speaking of a concept of collage maybe he did not uh, maybe Piranesi was not thinking of collage but it is maybe there yeah but, but uh, we have to uh, we have to, to, to to make attention because uh, collage, assemblage, montage are uh, modern concepts, modern world. You know, because uh, when we speak about, uh, I don't know, Robert Adam, Robert Adam or, or uh, Piranesi, they, they, they don't speak about fragments, they don't speak about collage, they don't speak about assemblage. So uh, uh, we, we, we know the not exactly, but we know uh, the, the, the beginning of the collage with the papier collé. And I, 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 I speak about it because uh, we know it, but at this but because at this moment uh, something, an, op uh, an operation in, in the painting is called collage. Really. So at this moment, Collage uh, became a concept. What is a concept? A manner of uh, operating, a manner of uh, producing a canvas, a manner of uh, thinking about uh, the balance, of thinking about uh, the, the, the heterogeneity in, in a canvas. When uh, Picasso take, I don't know, uh, papers of uh, stacking papers or all these uh, uh, materials that are put in on the canvas. It's in relation, but uh, we, we, I, 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 I don't develop, but, but it's in relation with the question of material of the first lecture, but uh, <laughs> I leave it, I leave it behind. It's too, too complicated. But after that, I think assemblage, it's a, a concept a little blurred uh, when uh, there was a, a, a great exhibition no, in, in the modern Museum of Modern Art in New York no, in uh, 1962, I think, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, it, it was the art of assemblage, no, the art of assemblage. and it's a uh, uh, Rauschenberg, it's, uh, it, many many artists. Uh, this, uh, uh, not only artists, but also uh, in the in the catalog, in the book, uh, there is uh, pictures of uh, urban environment. 
like uh, like uh, Venturi Las, Las Vegas, no? with the, all the billboards, all the uh, so it's it's a, a urban collage, no? a urban assemblage because uh, uh, Seitz, which is the curator, takes the word assemblage, no? not collage, assemblage, because it it is also assemblage is uh, for him is in uh, three dimensions, collage is two dimensions, no? or three dimensions, uh, uh, something like a sculpture, something like uh, well, what what Rauschenberg is, is making at this moment, no? and, 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 and we speak at this moment about assemblage, and he speaks about assemblage, but I think it's a, it's a moment to, uh, when assemblage becomes uh, really uh, the description of operations and becomes a concept. And the montage, it, uh, montage it's the same, no? because it was the, 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 the movies. No? And, uh, so it's three, three, three types of operation uh, that seems uh, very, very very close, or very near. So, uh, so they belong to different. Yes. I mean, so it's, uh, they are not exactly the same. Yeah. No, the not exactly the same. And the outcomes. Oh, but, uh, but you have, we have, to uh, to try to understand no, what no, is no, the no, difference. Uh, because if 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 we, you, you you speak about collage uh, uh, in a manner too too large, it's not really precise. No? So you have to. To try to precise so what operations uh, and, and I think the the Campo Martio is very interesting because uh, when you see it, uh, when you look at it exactly, uh, you, you you are obliged to 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 make these questions. No, you are enfin, obliged if you are interested. Well, but you, you feel are, urged. You are, I mean, yeah. it's it's talking to you, eh? yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I want to, to uh, uh, yes, you speak about uh, Robert Adam, uh, Le Doux, Boulet. Uh, I am not, uh, I am not a specialist of the 18th century, so I don't want to to go <laughs> in this uh, in, in this question, it's but. But what is interesting for me, what you, you said before, it's a il campo, il, le, il campo Martio is a project. It's a project. It is a project. It is not a representation. It is a project. So, what is the thinking? What what about what uh, uh, Piranesi was thinking at this moment? It, 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 it's incredible to, to, to do this. Story. So, well, he has a, a great inspiration in some, uh, I mean, you, you probably remember that, well, quite some time before, yeah. but they were discovered, I mean, the uh, archaeologists discovered the m marble plain of Rome, yeah. fragments yes, of yeah. the marble plain, yeah. uh, La Roma Marbonea, yeah. to see, I mean, uh, traced on a marble, um, all these lines, red lines, uh, of the Roman Fora, that was the Fora building, I mean, gave probably this idea that how do I draw the plan yes. of a city? I mean, what is the plan? And how, I mean, I, and, and I, I agree that Jasmine came in with this idea, I mean, of the void, I mean, the liminal, um, uh, and the interstitial, I mean, because it's all overlapping, I mean. And uh, I think he had some good inspiration, Piranesi, in doing this exercise of designing. I mean, it's a project. It's not innocent, but it's a project. And um, now I have a question for you, because when you say Corbud, I mean, not Corbud, hold on, Jeanne is young, eh? He's not Corbeau, he's Jeanneret. Jeanneret doesn't like Pyrenees. Well, you say, doesn't like him. He prefers Pierre Oligorio, the 
the plan of Rome, no, I mean, not the plan, the representation of Rome. There is a big difference Jacques, between a representation of Rome with scattered uh, pure forms, this is Piero Ligonio, and the intellectual, not at all innocent, project of uh, Piranesi. How much the young uh, Charles Edouard is intellectually prepared to read all the layers of a project like this. I mean, he needs to become Le Corbusier, he needs to become, to go to Sandier, I mean, reach the point of Sandier before having, uh, I mean, the skill to go through this process of Pyrenees. This is my understanding. While Pietro Ligorio offers a ready-made, offers the ready-made pure object. They are there in front of him. It's, uh, I don't want to say that it's easy to understand, but it's already made. I mean, you have the cylinder, you have the pyramid, the, the, the pure volume and the, huh? I think that, I mean, it's not what, he, uh, if he likes or if he doesn't like, it's at what time in your process of growing, of developing of your intellectual expertise, you become able to penetrate this almost impenetrable uh, project of Giovanni uh, Battista I mean, I think the Campo Marzio is the biggest project we have received in a way, without exaggerating, but it's so deep and not innocent. I, uh, but, but perhaps uh, Le Corbusier uh, saw the, the, the Campo Marzio plan when he was uh, young, when he, he was in the, the National Library in Paris, mm. because he, yeah. he, 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 he take uh, many, many books and... Uh, it would be interesting what he should uh, he, 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 You know, when, when he was in the National Library, he, he, he makes uh, drawings, the calque. Yes. Uh, he, he, he copies, he uses a, a tracing he copies uh, copy. uh, some, uh, some uh, drawing, not, but not uh, Piranesi. No, but I mean, you know the problem. I, I, the point is, what's the source of Pierre and Charles Edouard? I think it's the Frutats volume. And the Frutats volumes, I mean, this is becoming very <laughs> into detail. The Frutats volume, which is the great collection, the three volumes of Rome plants, they don't include Campo Marzio. Yes. Well, why they do include Piero Ligorio, the round Rome, and so on, that is referring also in very much So probably, I mean, you, Jean-Louis, I mean, you, the great scholars of Corbu, they can tell us, I mean, what is he really referring to? I mean, what's the source mm -hmm. at that point that he's using? There's actually a question. Yeah, go ahead. I was wondering when you talk about innocence, and we have talked, we have talked a lot about, about design, urban design, and but we haven't talked about the reasons behind them. And when you say not innocent, not innocent, I'm always expecting you to t talk about politics a little bit because we, when we see collage, we see behind it a reaction to political hegemony, a little bit like when you talk about the chaos, we see uh, an anarchist approach uh, to architecture. Are we avoiding the subject because it is sensitive, or is it because it's not there, or can we talk about it? Because I'm curious, I'm really curious to understand the approaches of both of them, of Piranesi, of Le Corbu, uh, all of the, the others too. Uh, Christina, So you mentioned politics, but I want to bring in economics too. I mean, I, I, um, and Jacques, at some point you said, well, it's not, it's not possible to make a, I think, you know, homogeneous plan, but of course, so I, I study um, socialist cities and it's absolutely possible to make a homogeneous plan and a planned economy. And I think this, this issue, I'm very, I'll have to go back and read this non-plan um, 
article because I think this issue of the plan, non-plan is, is absolutely the issue in the contemporary city and the post-socialist world right now because um, under a planned economy, I mean, it's all regulations and, um, and so a very kind of you know, precise and directive urban form can be made and in the post-socialist condition I was just in Baku, Azerbaijan, so a former socialist republic, and they have just in 2014, or just now, finally um, coming together with, a, with an urban plan for the city. Uh, the last one that they've been using is from 1986. <laughs> and so like, in, this, in this kind of void of regulation, the non-plan has, has been what's happened. So, these um, kind of towers in the park, micro regions, these you know hyper rational um, urban forms have been plugged in with speculative development. You know the the economy, the market economy is ahead of regulation, yeah. and um, and so I think you know talking a little bit about the politics of the city or the economy of the city and. And finally, I mean, even though this is a this is a project, um, and it's easy to kind of, in a certain way, romanticize the aesthetics mm -hmm. of it, um, I, I do wonder what kind of economic condition would create, or political condition would would actually create this kind of urbanism. And is it is it, you know, I, I think it's worth talking about that. Welcome. Um, first of all, thank you all for uh, really interesting uh, publications on yesterday's uh, lecture. Um, I want to step back and um, bring up something that you, brought, uh, you mentioned, uh, Maristella, which is the idea that this is a completely uh, almost fake project, um, mm -hmm. and the idea that you brought up against me, which is the idea of utopia. Um, because for me, and, and it's something that hasn't been brought up so far, uh, but for me, what's really, really interesting about uh, Veronese and, and the contribution he made to architectural culture, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is this idea of architectural fiction, uh, which before him, I mean, you'd have to convince me it existed, because I don't think it did. Um, I mean, there was no, it's not a coincidence that uh, Bollet and they do come just after and they start proposing this incredible um, seminal project um, influenced by the ideas that he actually uh, proposed. So if we go back to like the, the previous uh, image, if you don't mind, like the overall. The overall, uh, the one you have at the very beginning. Yeah, this one. Uh, okay. So this is a made up, an imagined overall plan of Rome represented on a made-up slab, uh, probably inspired by the marble, yeah. um, shown with other uh, fragments, and the hole is etched, and the etching also for us became kind of legendary. So there's so many series and layers of fiction in this very document, mm -hmm. embedded, but also later on, added on, like throughout, you know, up to the present, and all these sort of narratives about this. Um, and I find that like really, really interesting. And I think also like we need to step out of the whole idea of collage, assemblage, because I think what's going on is much softer and a much more sophisticated in a way operation. The violence of cutting and gluing is not exactly here. It's it's really operating sort of somewhere in between. It's much more um, deliberate. It's much more uh, imaginative, fictive for sure. Um, and that's, like, I can bring it also back up to the present or the very recent past when, for example, in, in, when Kula speaks about uh, the surrealist uh, technique of the paranoid critical method, right, in Delirious New York, and which is something that he still works today, uh, with today. Uh, the idea that you can actually propose an architectural fiction by using what he calls uh, real crutches so you do rely on elements of reality. So you would find the Colosseum somewhere here, right? You would find. No, 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 never. Never? No. Not in <laughs> Veronese's. Not in the Campo Max. No, 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 but like in, in the in the plans he prepares, right? So 
he does rely on fragments oh, yes, from... Yes, yeah. you have the Piazza Navona, the exactly. here and here. Exactly, but he there. makes up everything else, and yeah. somehow because there are elements that are supposed to be real, we kind of buy the whole thing. Uh, he kind of gives it this sort of really interesting uh, fictive slash real quality. And I find that to be the most kind of interesting aspect of, of this project, of this plan, and how it's been used either as a metaphor or as a tool, as a design kind of methodology um, in, in later works. Um, so I wonder if somebody can sort of respond to that. Um, and again, I think we should really step away from all of these sort of art-inspired kind of uh, terminology because I think Veronese was much more sophisticated and way ahead of what artists did in the early 20th century. Are you going too far in the kind of creating the myth? I mean, how far? The myth already exists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just reminding ourselves. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Can you go ahead. Um, so um, I was looking at the Piranesi engravings, and it seems to me that talking about fiction and economy and politics, it's it seems that there are um, three-dimensional spaces that are self-obsessed with architecture and um, it's this fiction that is self-absorbed within itself and there's not much an outside in his, uh, in his engravings. There's uh, always like you see an opening and in the opening there's more architecture and in the opening there's more architecture and then there's not much enough space for freedom of, uh, of outside, of freedom of horizon, of freedom of seeing whatever is not architecture. And it seems to me that in the plan also there's this massive details of, of many of things and it's, it's also self-absorbed and maybe the, the whole political, economical um, Discussion it gives is is a is also a self self absorbed plan where where you are not really free but you are not really controlled by a system because the system tends towards uh, <coughs> chaos and and there's such a beauty in the darkness of the engravings that that the whole that that you don't really want to escape of the system that is tying you down toward in itself and it's. It's so formal, it's so architectural, but at the same time, it's, it's, it is about economy and, and all the um, figures in, in, the, in the engravings are, are, they are not happy, uh, they seem to have a role to play in the system, yet um, they, no one seems to want to like, make a carve in the, in the engraving and get out of it. And the plan seems to tell me similar well, I think, uh, I mean, I cannot speak, uh, I only speak through Tafuri's text regarding uh, politics mostly because, uh, and I think what he says about uh, rationality and that I think he directly means uh, rationality of enlightenment and all this emancipated new subject emerging individual, which actually anticipates its own uh, destruction. So I think this is how he, um, Piranesi tried to be somehow political, uh, I mean, through this uh, project. And then he also, uh, regarding Amin's comment, uh, again, Tafuri says that uh, it, uh, Campo Mardio, I mean, I might somehow trans, uh, like, somehow I'm saying in my own words, it's true but not real. So he doesn't say that, of course, I mean, he never uses collage, but it is somehow a collection, uh, artistically intentional, artistic uh, in a sense of his doing his own project. But uh, yeah, and he brings, uh, and nothing is uh, by chance, nothing is fortuitous, of course. Yes. I just wanted to notice, I mean, part of what I, what I was going to say is kind of covered already, but I just wanted to notice the way in which, uh, when it comes to the city, uh, we are kind of moving from the formal discourse on architecture, more aesthetical, to the to economics, to politics, to social issues. Uh, for example, you started it perhaps with the last image you showed, 
this kind of uh, social contrast, like two fragments or two worlds like separated by by a, a thin limit. And I think that leads you I mean, to ask perhaps what are, what are the limits of the architectural discourse uh, in terms of, of being comprehensively able to deal with the city. For example, I, I think that uh, to talk about the uh, Ungers project for Berlin, you cannot uh, understand that project well if you don't understand that uh, Berlin, West Berlin was actually an island then surrounded by, by East Germany, for example. So I think uh, we are, can, I mean, as architects, we are effective in terms of dealing with the city when we sort of look at the limits of our discourse and how our discourse engages with economics, politics, and so forth. Because one can say, as we were asking, do we need architect, I mean, phenomenology, to talk about architecture, an engineer could come here and say, okay, do we need architects or do we need architecture <laughs> to deal with the city? And I think our question, I mean, our answer would be, uh, yeah, because we, we have a, we deal with form, with space, and uh, with physical, um, you know, matter, but the way in which that physical matter and, and space and form deal with the rest of our surrounding disciplines and fields of knowledge is the, the way in which becomes important not only for us, but also to, I mean, to the rest. And also a small reflection on how we architects like uh, participating in the decision making of cities. I mean, less in a, in a theoretical level, but more in a practical level. to boundaries and limits, there's always something that I keep thinking like that we're not even talking about the environment that is there and that the river being a boundary or a limit or something else, it's actually a river and it's moving and it's doing other things. So in, in talking about or thinking about how the city can be envisioned or planned or, or even manipulated, that, that in these very static plans, there's always, for me anyway, something that's missing on that level in terms of environment, I mean, the la you're reading more, I mean, the natural elements? The, the well, the, the natural elements, and then also I think it being very static in that there, there's a boundary to, or a limit to how big this plant is, but it continues all the way to the edge, and, and if you go back to the, to yeah. the larger plant, it, it continues off the page, so even then, for, you know, to imagine how it grows or how it shrinks, if we're talking about other cities, like Detroit, then, then where's the movement kind of happening in an imagined city to begin with, but still, um, there's going to be an element Maybe it's Maybe you mean environment and time. The, because I wanted to make first a presentation about the notion of time and how all the fragments and so on can, can be discussed and in, in how, how it changes throughout the period and how it evolves and that's why static versus environment and time and, and transformation because we keep talking about this plan as if nothing before, nothing after there will never change. Um, yeah. Um. Jack, we have more Comment? No, no, not really. But <laughs> see, about uh, the question, uh, I don't speak about it before, but about uh, the question of fragment, I think it, it's uh, for, the, for the understanding of, uh, uh, of architectures like uh, so, like. Uh, Robert Adam, like uh, the Le Doux, I think not Boulet, but no, maybe. Uh, all these, uh, uh, there are, there are, there is no, no many uh, uh, texts about the question of fragmentation, no? because uh, uh, we have to, 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 to think about it, because when you, I, I remember one uh, in the in the 
in the catalogue of the, the exhibition of John Soon in London, in London mm. you know this catalogue, there is a, a, an article by uh, uh, Middleton uh, about the question of fragments. Uh -huh. And after that, I, I was interested in this, in this question, and uh, I found nothing except in another publication about uh, an homage uh, to Robert Middleton. The, I don't remember the, oh, yes, the, the name, book, the name yeah. of the book. No, I don't remember. And there is, a, in this book, there is a, a, an article about the question of fragment. Mm -hmm. But I think only these two texts uh, are about fragment. And it's very, very, it's very, very few. It's incredible because it's a, a really, I think, a, a question uh, very interesting. Because what what is the difference between a, a fragment in the in the Bank of London by Soane and with a, in a plan by uh, I don't know Le Doux with for uh, the Saline de Chaux mm -hmm. and, and the difference with a, a plan by uh, Piranesi? You know? What what are I? I don't know exactly. I, I cannot say the difference. It's uh, this one, but we, we, I think we have to, to to think about it if you are interesting. If we are interesting in the question of fragment d'assemblage, all these uh, things, which are difficult. But I consider a great catalog of fragments. Uh, for example, pattern, a pattern language. Uh, Christopher Alexander, which is this collection of uh, pattern in a way, and yes. you could consider it uh, as a yeah. But you know, patterns are diagrams. Fragment, I mean, this is something, I mean, ca no, jumping that's in. That's very eh? interesting. And fragments are, I mean, are not diagrammatic per se, I mean, they could, but that's not, I mean, I think that the, the concept of fragments uh, is relevant, I mean, for instance, for contemporary architecture. And, I mean, how far, uh, I, I mean, I'm glad that Jacques brought it up, I mean, because it's part of our language today, I mean, yeah. but we, I mean, we all come with our own interpretation. I, I think they also came, uh, again, in a more recent history, uh, concealed with the, by the word islands. I mean, Cool has used this, I think, a lot, uh, especially, in, for example, in the Rios New York and uh, the um, uh, City of the Captive Globe. Yes. Which is a city of fragments, uh, just uh, yeah, as uh, Manhattan like uh, skyscrapers. And, uh, you, you can put the, 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 the big great one. image. No, not this one. But the, the one On you time. started. <laughs> yes. yeah. Not because the there is. Uh, it's, uh, like this, no, but there is a problem with Colas because uh, when he, he, oh. he when he chose uh, uh, the part, no, 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 because it's interesting. I think. No, no, I he, think. He, 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 I, I think he takes you know. uh, some uh, some part. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, it's not too precise, so I, I cannot uh, see exactly. But in uh, really here, yeah, I think. No? Not not in the, <coughs> in the center, not with this uh, great building, not but with a uh, with uh, no uh, new, a new urban fabric. No, it's really new urban fabric. So it's uh, interesting because uh, why this point? It shows exactly this one because uh, it's not the same like uh, with all the. You the think buildings. that he's selecting a generic? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, I would say more human. It's more uh, human. It's a smaller scale, more human, less monumental. It does not follow the columns you see up there, for example. Good point. I mean, I never thought which section or which I fragment mean, <laughs> is used. You speak about Le Corbusier, and uh, uh, I think, I suppose, uh, in uh, wh when he was young, in uh, 19, uh, 1950, no? he was young. So he, he, has, uh, he has the, the idea 
to, to make something about the construction of the city. Mm -hmm. So, the construction of the city is not the, 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 the chaos of the city, the construction of the city. So, a city uh, which is uh, regular, it's impossible to speak about a, a city of fragments. You know. So, at this moment, the question of uh, assemblage, of collage, uh, I think, the, these questions are not interesting for him. After that, he, he was an architect. At, at this time, he was an architect, but after that, he was an architect in the 20s. No? And, and he is thinking about free plan. It's his problem no? with the ready made. Yeah. With the ready made. But it's a question also of ready made. And, uh, and, uh, he, he don't. Uh, he doesn't look at uh, at, the, at this time. It's finished. He he, 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 he doesn't return to, to to the national library. It's finished for him uh, this this time. So he, I think he he forgets uh, uh, Piranesi. Mm -hmm. yeah. But after, I think in. Uh, in, uh, in the 50s and after the, sec after the war, after the, the Second World War, uh, is in a problematic of assemblage. Yes. Every time. No, every time, because when you see all the, uh, the Milonas in Ahmedabad, when you see the Villa Chaudan, when you see all the, the great uh, buildings at this moment, and also in his paintings. In the painting. Yeah. When, when he speaks about uh, his paintings, when he speaks from uh, the 30s to, to the end of his life, you know, he, speak, he speaks always about combina combination. The, 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 the painting is a combination. Combination of, of forms and combination of objects. And, and when you read all, the, enfin, all yes, uh, the, the catalog of, of uh, his exhibition in uh, Zurich in the 30s and after in the exhibition after the war, it's uh, very interesting to, to, to read exactly because uh, uh, there is this, this word, combinaison, combination, uh, which appears always. Always, not an, not another, not another. Word. This one, so for him, I think it's important. This, this one, and it's uh, at this. You have to uh, when you, you are interesting for, by uh, the question of form, the question of uh, uh, thinking about form. You are always uh, obliged, I think, to to read exactly what what uh, because an architect or like an artist, it's like a, a philosopher, uh, when uh, he uses word, it's not for a singer. He says this word. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, after that, you have to, to understand what uh, what this word, uh, at, uh, which is we, uh, what is the relation between this word and the thinking of. And uh, for, for you, it's really, and for me, it's really a, a very, very uh, interesting, very important, very. Uh, you, you can continue to, to think because you you, you precise the, the, the concept of the the concept of of, of the artist of the art. Uh, I think it always is. <laughs> Why, why an artist uh, uh, take uh, this, uh, this work to, to, to describe uh, his work, to de this work to describe his work? It's not, uh, it's not innocent. It's not, it's not innocent. So Le Corbusier make, uh, made, made this always. always. Yes. And, and not, not the same world. Not the same one at, at for, for all times. No? At, 
Oh. In the 20s, it's this uh, vocabulary, and after that, uh, because he changed, also he changed uh, in, in, in his work, he changed uh, in his thinking. Jacques, uh, there is this issue of politics that remains there, I mean like, there, uh, in the air. Uh, I don't think, I mean, that we can, we can speculate, of course, so this is my idea, we can speculate, but I don't think that gives you so much more now, uh, uh, allows you to know more about the campus masters, I mean, the politics at the time. Not really. I'm wondering if this issue of politics is not like a derived, mm, uh, like a kind of bipolar, a derived condition after the um, Manfredo Tafuri long essay on uh, the Campo Marzio. Uh, when you open La Sfera e Labirinto, uh, Campo Piranesi is the first essay in the book. And then the book deals with really heavy political issues, including Soviet Union and so on. Um, I think it's a very intriguing, uh, I mean, implicitly, Piranesi is there and it gets a political implication. Uh, really, at the point of, I mean, it's there, it's it could be any place. I mean, why you do place the, uh, your essay on Campo Marzio at the beginning of a book that has to do with the avant-garde, heterodox, everything else? It's because you consider that as a, uh, a stone, I mean, something, I mean, a marking of something. So I'm now thinking, and this is my interpretation, that how much the, 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 the political quality that I'm not, not quality, the political, I mean, reading of the Campo Marzio, if it's not also the way we read the Campo Marzio through Manfredo da Furi, sorry. Yeah, I mean, before the French Revolution, there really were no politics. <laughs> I mean, well, uh, he had uh, uh, Louis uh, Cadox. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's, it's it's not the ancien regime. Yeah, yeah, it's not the, the way we understand politics. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much like a recent, Reinterpretation of a lot of these things. We're like projecting back onto them uh, a value of, of politics that we deal with the Yeah, but I mean, if, if this is to be, if this is said as a, as a sort of model, then I think it is, it is fair to ask those questions. Absolutely. But I don't think it's fair to superimpose on the Renaissance intention at the time uh, a sort of political uh, intent. Well, I'm. I, I would not be so black and white. I mean, uh, uh, Piranesi knows very well how he's acting. I mean, uh, between the English school and the French Academy, I mean, he's located in a very political position in Rome. Hmm? He's along the Via Sistina. He deals, I mean, with, I mean, he has his own political, I think he has a political agenda, but if a political agenda can correspond to a politics, I mean, I would, I would not argue it. I mean, I mean, at least it's not my, what I understand of this, of this, um, campo, of the Campo Marzio. But the way we read it now, through different lens of historiography, of, of interpretation, I think that becomes also part of a political reading. Yeah, I, I think uh, I agree with you in terms of, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a, an extension from Piranesi. There's also a load uh, that we add to it through okay. interpretations. The full interpretation is really a really strong one, and it loads come onto the understanding of Campo Marzio quite a lot. But I would say that uh, politics exists uh, since the police exist. I mean, that's the since the police. So, so I think that it, we can say, yeah, there is some political intention, whatever that is, uh, in Piranesi's uh, fiction. As I, I go back to that uh, sort of uh, comment by, I mean, the fiction of, of this Campo Marzio. And I was wondering, just like a 
really detailed question and nothing to do with the issues, but can we zoom in the Campo Mar today? Because yes, we can. I mean, this, we is, this, is, this, is, this is from my, my, my ignorance, but isn't he drawing Campo Mar at least this uh, particular drawing uh, as if they were ruins in terms of we cannot tell in that plan that they are like we imagine the, uh, they are kind of roof uh, buildings because we sort of uh, distinguish like sort of forms and squares and whatever. But the the way in which he draws uh, the, the kind of ruins is it kind of similar to the I mean I don't know if there are more drawings on Campo Marzio. That's why I'm saying for my ignorance. But at least at least what what we see here I think they are. It is not like a like a lively city. It is like a city in ruins somehow. I don't know. If that mm -hmm. that there are the three uh, perspectival representations, but but I mean, and they are very they, they are very odd. I mean, there is one uh, of the uh, Teatro di Marcello, uh, one uh, of the Teatro outside the Via Flaminia, but they are not relevant. And this is a good observation. They are not. Very, they don't. They don't make this plan. I mean, visually three-dimensional. I mean, they they belong to a different. Uh, I don't even um, something else. I don't even. I never studied this in uh, in detail. But I don't even know why he produced the three perspectival view. If it was, I mean, something to sell it better or something else. But apparently there are two different uh, approaches. I mean, maybe this becomes too over intellectual, too over. I mean, who is uh, who is reading this? Well, if you if you uh, go to Le Antichità Romane, you see the buildings, and I mean, it's also easy to sell. I mean, the two perspective of view. It's a commodity. You can sell it. Yeah. To, to sell, though the British, they apparently, they are, they are fond of it. it. To sell this, I mean, different engravings, it's not, I mean, the same thing. Uh, and probably, I, I don't know, this is only a speculation. Jacques, uh, uh, you remember the three perspective of view? Uh, of the, the, the perspective that you Yes, have. yes, uh, I mean. Uh, but not really, but there is one more. There are three monuments. Yeah, I think it was too low. But, but they don't but appear, for instance, you in are, the frontispiece. You have to, to think about they never appear in the frontispiece. The frontispiece uh, of this uh, uh, Campo Marzio, it's all either uh, Adam or it's a plant. Yes, because it makes sense. The ruins and the fragment can go together in terms of being like something that is kind of a leftover of, of, a, of an absent totality. So, if this is a collection of fragments of projects, it could be also like a collection of fragments in terms of ruins. I don't know. It's just like a uh, uh, to, to, uh, to one 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 remark. Uh, it's not. It's not. Well, for me, it's not a, a urban plan. Because because a urban plan has always uh, a frame. It's impossible to to, to not to uh, a urban plan it has a frame because you you are you are the road you are the street you are that's what uh, uh, Yasmin was uh, almost the the, the 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 last picture uh, th th there is a frame the street yes yeah, th there is nothing like this it's without without uh, I think absolutely yes. without. Uh, a frame for the for the wood. There is a frame for for a street here, a street here, a street here, but not for the wood. So it's for me. If you continue to to think, it's a a, a plan very absolutely impossible. So you don't have to 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 think if if is if it is it, is it a model for the urban. A contemporary city? No, no, it's not the model. It's a model of uh, understanding, not a model for uh, for planning. Absolutely not. I think. And the the uh, the, the second thing is uh, uh, nobody speaks about uh, Ethiopia. No, uh, now. Uh, no, well, she mentioned. But uh, we have to 
to, to remember that uh, Tafuri starts with, I, I remember, I don't know exactly if it's like this, but uh, he starts uh, his text with the question of heterotopia. Yes. The text of uh, Foucault. Foucault. The old text, <laughs> because he, Foucault wrote this text in uh, 60, 67, I think. So, uh, with a, a, a false name <laughs> in <laughs> the, release, the, the review, L'Architecture, uh, in, in, in Italy, not in France. No? This yeah. text was uh, known uh, later, later. So, with uh, the question of heterotopia, I think it's a political uh, question, yeah, really a political question. So, if you make all this relation between the fragment, between uh, the understanding of, uh, of the question of the city, between uh, the question of heterotopia, all this, uh, I think it's really, uh, you can uh, develop uh, a reflection about all these uh, points. And uh, you, you have to, wait, wait have to, to do this. After that, uh, it's uh, it's not the. It's not. It 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 becomes the the problem of how to do the city today. But, uh, but it's another thing. Another we'll thing. It's for another lecture. Yeah. Yes. It, it's <laughs> another lecture. It's another work. It's another. Uh, it's, it's related to this, it's possible to relate it to this, but uh, it's another problem. I think we can stop here also because we have, have oh sorry, no, just to final, 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 final observation, not a comment or a question. <coughs> Pianesi also uh, has drawn the Campo Marzio as a fragment itself. If you look at the borders, it's kind of a, a cut, like, and, and if you go, if you zoom out back to the it, it is it is like a piece of, of stone like I mean city could continue so it's kind of drawn thought in terms of prey as it was a fragment as it was kind of a ruined fragment and I think the fact that there are some urban pieces some buildings that are kind of half in half out I think it's also an interesting feature of the I'm pretty, sh pretty sure that it's linked to the Roma Memorial in yeah. Yeah. yes which is um, Okay, we stop here.